So pretty much since I started playing Path of Exile 2, I've gotten quite a few requests in my stream to show you guys my build. So I figured that I would do this video. We're actually streaming right now. And uh, I figured I'd show off what I've been working with. Now, I am somewhat of a noob when it comes to Path of Exile, so I don't know just how efficient this build is, but it's been doing some pretty good damage. The whole point is going to be you're going to drop some gas grenades, then you're going to follow this up with some explosive grenades, and then they're going to explode, deal tons of damage. However, it takes a very long time for the explosive grenades to actually explode because of some of the points that we have and even just the nature of explosive grenades. So we're going to be using a skill called Explosive Shot to detonate those grenades so that they detonate a little bit faster. So the ideal rotation is going to be something like gas bomb, explosive bomb, and then you Reloaded. shoot your explosive thing and it explodes ideally because whenever you don't have enemies, sometimes the skill glitches a little bit when you're playing on controller because I like playing on controller. But this is your ideal setup. Uh, at the level that I'm at, this is extremely mana hungry, so you're going to be popping down uh, mana flasks like absolute tic tacs, but this is kind of like the basics. Now, the thing is, whenever you're up against bosses because of the mana hungry nature of this build, you might start running short close to the end of the fight, but we also have a solution for that, and the solution is basic shots. The basic shots of the crossbow actually deal a crap ton of damage, a surprising amount of damage. You will be surprised. Uh, so if you're running low on mana, you're going to swap to this. We're going to put some modifiers on it so that it deals a good old chunk of damage and it will still be able to clean house. But clearing, uh, clearing map, this builds an absolute beast as you guys will see. So first let's talk about the skills that we are using on this build. I am using a controller layout, so bear with me as we go through these, but, uh, so let's start on the basic for the crossbow shot, which, like I said, this is only ever used, you know, sparingly in certain boss fights if you run out of mana or anything like that, or if you're having a really tough time landing grenades on a boss, which sometimes can be a little bit tricky. Maybe that's just for me because I'm playing with controller, maybe with mouse and keyboard, it's a little bit more precise, makes things a little bit easier. But anyways, on crossbow shot, the skills that I put is brutality for additional, um, additional uh, physical damage then we have execute because usually i will have already done a bunch of damage on grenades by the time that i uh that i run out of mana so you should be coming up on the point where uh this will start working for the low life low life is 35 percent so if you blast the boss full of grenades and you're like oh crap i'm out of mana you can swap to this and you'll have the additional damage from execute and then i just put ammo conservation in here you can probably get something even better but like i said i don't even use this skill all that often it's just usually to finish off a boss that's been a little bit too long if that happens to be the case now continuing onwards on explosive grenade this is going to be your bread and butter this is where most of the damage comes from i realized that a lot of people were using the gas grenade explosions previously to uh actually be the the main source of damage i never really used it like that I use my grenades mostly to debuff enemies, to cut down on their armor, to mess with their uh, with the poison that spreads and does all of these things. So I never really relied on the explosions of the gas grenades. I rely on the damage of the explosive grenade to deal most of the damage, okay? So on explosive grenades, we have scatter shot, which increases the number of projectiles that you fire, which as you guys will see, we're actually firing like, is it four or five? I think it's five now. Yeah, it's like five projectiles because of the crossbow that we're using. And I think that there's a, a skill that we have on the on the skill tree that is doing that as well. But yeah, we got scatter shot for additional projectiles. Then we have fire infusion because a decent chunk of the damage of this grenade is fire. So we're adding a little bit more fire damage onto it. Uh, this also means that if, you, if you're up against the boss that is tremendously resilient to fire, I will actually swap to uh, Voltaic Grenades and use those instead. They're not as good, they don't deal as much damage, but it's better dealing some damage than dealing nothing. I've only had to swap for one boss up until this point, I think. There's only been one boss where I felt the need to swap. But, you know, the option is there if you need a different grenade to blow it up. Uh, I'm currently at level 40, so this is not an endgame build, obviously. It's more like a leveling build to kind of, like, get you going. But yeah, we have uh, the fire infusion, then we have lacerate so that it makes enemies bleed. This is really because I couldn't really think of something else to put in here, so I just put lacerate. Uh, gas grenades, we have um, 
corrosion this is going to bust up their armor real good which is very useful because then you know you break their armor deal more damage good stuff bursting plague so we're adding an additional da an additional poison damage that goes to a percentage of the monster's life and armor explosion so whenever the armor of the enemies fully breaks because we have corrosion on here there's another explosion that triggers so basically the the whole point of this is explosives 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 because that's kind of like what i wanted to do then on top of it we have explosive shot which like i've explained the whole purpose of explosive shot is detonating those grenades uh, a little bit faster because explosive grenades take too long to detonate sometimes you can also just use uh explosive shot to detonate the gas grenades as well so you know uh, this right here has it so that we have double barrel, which means that we have two shots of explosive shot rather than just one. And then we put pierce. This is because, like I said, I'm playing on controller and sometimes grenades go past the enemies. And if you shoot an enemy and then you don't shoot the grenade that's right behind them, then sometimes the grenade doesn't explode. Whereas like this shoots through, blows everything up. That's exactly what I want. Uh, if you have better precision on your grenades, you might want to put something else in here that might be more useful. We are running Herald of Ash with increased area of effect, which is not really super important in my opinion, but vitality, pretty freaking good. But you're not going to be able to get uh, vitality at the very beginning, so, you know. I also have Ripwire Ballista to kind of like, uh, if I'm getting a little bit too swarmed, too annoyed, which doesn't really happen that often, so it's more kind of like just a backup type thing. Uh, we shoot it with lockdown to increase the pin buildup as well as uh, chaining so that it chains through enemies and it will chain. Some of those are uh, faster, more annoying, like the small beetles and stuff like that. Uh, we, I will sometimes put this down. Oil grenade, I don't really use that much. Uh, I've just recently gotten it, but I do have it equipped. I have it with encumbrance so that it slows enemies even more, as well as persistence so it lasts a little bit longer. But I don't really use this that much. Every now and then I will pop one of these off. Sure, you can trigger it together with the gas grenades, explosive grenades. But I just feel like once you get to the oil grenade, you're adding a third grenade in there. And you're already dealing a bunch of fire damage, a bunch of stuff with the armor and all that stuff. That just, it feels like a waste of DPS at this point. But again, with me being somewhat of a noob when it comes to this, I don't know if it is or if it isn't. Uh, Voltaic grenade, like I said, sometimes I'll equip it. Uh, glacial bolt. I don't really use, but this is an alternate to the uh, explosive shot. So if you find that you are having a tough time keeping enemies in place, uh, this can be an alternate to your explosive shot because this will CC enemies, but it will be a slower play style because you'll be required throw your grenades, then glacial shot, then wait for the grenades to detonate, and then repeat the process. Not as fast in my experience, but a little bit easier to play. So maybe if you're not as dexterous on your controllers, this might be an easier way to play, a little bit more chill, a lot more CC potential. It's also very good. Now, an important thing is you're not going to have access to explosive shot at the very beginning of the game. So trying to play a grenades build at the beginning of the game is a bit of a nightmare because you're like, oh, I throw the grenades, but then everybody runs past the grenades and then I miss my explosions. So that's why at the very beginning of the game, I would recommend permafrost bolts. Permafrost bolts, real good. Shotgun blast deals ice damage, will freeze enemies earlier in the game so that your grenades can land. So the idea is permafrost, uh, a couple of permafrost shots, then you throw your grenades or you throw your grenades and permafrost shots, but you alternate between permafrost bolts and grenades and then your grenades will detonate because you will slow down your enemies. That was kind of like the way that I did it as I was leveling up. So that would be my recommendation. You basically use permafrost bolts until you gain access to explosive shot to keep things in place. I almost wish that uh, the other ice shot, what's it called, uh, Glacial Bolt, I almost wish this was available earlier to replace permafrost bolts because permafrost bolts drop off really, really fast in my opinion. But, you know, that's been my experience with that. Now, in terms of gear, uh, obviously your mileage will vary. The one thing that I would recommend for the uh, passive skill tree that I'm going to show you is that all of your gear pieces have armor and evasion rating because that is going to benefit you massively with uh, some of the defensive skills that I'm going to be picking up along the way. So make sure that all of your skill, all of your gear has armor and evasion rating and try to keep up with that going up. I mean, for the rings, I think it's general recommendations. Get yourself some resistances. I actually need to replace this ring because it kind of sucks. Uh, obviously, you want to have as much health as you can possibly get. We got a really good health roll on this helmet, even though we also got a really bad roll immediately afterwards with the 20% reduced attribute requirements. But 
but I'm still using it for the maximum life. Uh, this armor is whatever the really cool thing about it. It's got 32 spirit, but nothing too special there. And then when it comes to your crossbow, you'll want to be using crossbows. I think this, this is the third act crossbow, uh, which is the bombard crossbow because it gives your grenade an additional projectile which is self-explanatory. Plant a grenade built, you want to get additional projectiles. You want to get just crossbows in general that deal a ton of damage. That, that's going to be mostly your objective. But if you can get plus three to all projectile skills like I was able to roll here, then you're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be in a good place. That's, that's pretty much where we're at. Then you'll notice that I also have a shield equipped and you guys might be like, what, what, what are you doing with a shield equipped? Why wouldn't you have like a secondary crossbow or something else on there? And the reasoning is I actually use block every now and then. It's pretty useful because of the fact that this game has active block. I just have block on my second bar and at any point in time, I can go like this. And there were actually quite a few bosses that I would just like stay in their face, blast them, then block, blast them, then block. Even though I have noticed that throughout the levels, blocking has become increasingly less useful. But in the beginning of the game, it was, uh, it was fairly useful. It was pretty good. Uh, no real major complaints there. Now... Let's take a look at the passive skill tree. So we are a witch hunter. I've gotten two ascendancies done. Uh, for the ascendancies, what I went for, the very first thing was Zealous Inquisition. Because whenever you kill enemies, they can explode and they deal a bunch of damage. This is very, very good. It's not a very high chance, but it actually procs reasonably often because you're throwing grenades and you're killing monsters by the buttload. So eventually one or two of them are going to explode and that's going to be even more damage. And not to mention that the whole theme around the build for me was I want as many explosions as possible. Now after that, I'm going to be grabbing this uh, Pitiless Killer. This basically makes it so that once you get to... Uh, a certain percentage which depends on the type of monster normal mobs at 30 percent magic enemies at 20 percent rares at 10 and uniques at five and basically this just kills them at that at that life which is really good and then um and then what you're gonna do is we will eventually come up to Sorry, I still struggle with controller to navigate this tree every now and then. We're going to work our way up to Decimating Strike, which is going to basically deal do the opposite of the Calling Strike, which is it gives you a big old damage boost right from the get-go between 5 and 30% of the enemies' life at the beginning of the fight when they're still in full health, which is really, really good. So we're going to be blowing them up when they're low on health. We're going to be blowing them up when they're high on health. And... Uh, yeah, you also get ad additional damage when they are below 35% health because of the passive note here. And then the other thing that I wanted to come get is no mercy, but we're not going to be able to uh, get to that node. So we're just going to get up to Witchbane because at least I've been told that you only get eight points for your ascendancy. So there you go. We're going to come up to Witchbane, which gives you this concentration thing that interrupts enemies and, and whatnot, and it deals a bunch of more damage. But that's kind of like the what we're working with. Now, in terms of the normal skill tree, what I did was I actually went straight down all the way here because I wanted to get this. But now that I know a little bit more about what I'm doing, I would not recommend anybody to do this. This was a terrible idea, but I still did it, okay? What I would recommend you to do, however, is you're going to come down the same path that I came through. You're going to pick up these. These I picked up a little bit later, so you don't have to pick up these at the very beginning because the game is actually fairly forgiving. Uh, a lot of people are saying, game's super hard. That That's not been my experience. Particularly if you're playing a mercenary, you can actually kind of kite around and do a bunch of stuff, so it's whatever. But you're going to come down here and you want to come over to Instant Reload. This, to me, was one of the most meaningful nodes that i've picked up that really improved how i felt about the build so i would prioritize getting to that node as fast as possible get your stats accordingly depending on what you need i've been alternating between strength and dexterity uh, because crossbows do b uh, balance off of strength and dexterity uh, we went through here to get a little bit of movement speed because movement speed is fairly miserable miserable i don't know if it's that advantageous to get the movement speed here rather than getting some of these uh attribute nodes but i went this way because I, I wanted to go fast i wanted to go zoom 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 so you pick this up and after you pick this up you can also go ahead and pick up these grenade nodes and after you pick up those grenade nodes, then I would come all the way up here to repeating explosives. I would only pick up repeating explosives, though, because then I would actually go back down and pick up this all the way to here. Because grenade skills will fire an additional projectile. So, 
basically I'm just trying to maximize grenade damage, get as many grenades on screen as possible, blow everything up, right? And then after you get this node, then you might want to go back up and get some more damage in here, but you guys get the idea, right? Then just choose however much damage you want to get on here, and then eventually go back down and pick up a couple of more nodes here. And somewhere along the way, make sure to pick up a little bit of defenses. And my plan moving forward is after I get the two edge nodes here on the crossbow, is I'm going to get some more attributes... Uh, at least up until 10% increased attributes. That's the, the plan. Just get like attributes here. And then I'm going to probably come pick up some more defensive nodes. And after that, again, I don't even know how many how many uh, points I'm going to get. But after that, I want to come into this two-handed tree to also increase. Uh, there's a note here that increases your area of effect for attack, stuff like that. I want to pick that up too. But these are my current plans. I'm still experimenting with it. So let me show you guys how this build is looking like. We are currently in um, the Chimeral Lands or whatever it's called. Like I said, you throw those grenades. Oops, I have the, the wrong grenade equipped. Doesn't matter, they blow up all the same. So you throw these, throw the explosives, shoot, blows up everything. This pretty much clears the whole map. This map is level 36, so I am over leveling it a little bit, but it's not that massive. And like I said, you can also like clear bosses with this stuff. Even if a boss is a little bit more challenging, you can just like cut around a little bit. And as you can see, you are just straight up cleaning house. Gas grenades into the other grenades. I'm actually going to switch uh, to focus fire. I get a little bit confused in this map every now and then because the, the edges aren't super visible unless you're looking at the map. So focus fire makes it so that you actually target uh, the enemies. This is a... Uh, a setting that you only I don't know if you only have it in controller what the deal is with that but it is this thing right here toggle 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 targeting mode uh and this when you're in control you can shift between dynamic default which is just like aim wherever the hell you want or focus fire which will specifically target an enemy this makes it a little bit easier to target your grenades because they won't shoot past quite as far away from the monsters uh, they still will end up shooting past the monsters a lot of times so do keep that in mind but yeah this is the build you just go through you blast 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 it'd be great to actually run into a boss oh we we do have a named mob here i didn't even realize as you can see we are also fairly tanky so long as you keep up with your uh with your gear even just those basic defenses that we've gotten are just straight up blasting through this no issues whatsoever let me pick up this because it's got a socket in it but yeah it's been pretty much smooth sailing this should uh, if you're playing merc and you want to play like an explosive build this should pretty much have you set up and this is the post the um gas grenades nerf as you guys can see still clears up really really nice Blows up armor, does all the things, gives you massive debuffs on enemies. So sometimes, if an enemy is fire resistant, you can even um, you can even get by by using more of the more of the poison grenades, just relying on that poison damage a little bit more. Which actually has me considering if I want to maybe look for some poison nodes in the passive tree or something like that. But I think they're a little bit too far out of the way to actually enable me to do that. But um, yeah. That right there is the build. It's been carrying me throughout the whole game. No real major issues. Uh, you have that situation on the second act where there's those two bosses that spawn right on top of one another with some really nasty affixes and stuff. And even there, I basically just face tank them. And I, I don't even remember if I have my the, my defensive stuff at the time. So sometimes, if a monster is being too annoying, you can just straight up face tank them. Hey, you leveled up, level 41. But yeah, as you can see, very pleasant, super chill, no sweat you just go right through murderize everything have yourself a blast that is my build if you guys enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe bell notification icon all that jazz and we'll see you in the next one peace